our next video. We need to talk about the demand for money. We've been talking about supply of money in different video with M1, with M2. We now will be talking about the demand for money, for real money. Real money was the amount of money divided by the price level. And so now, demand for money is dependent on the interest rate. On the interest rate, for example, take your bank account. Say, if you want to deposit money on your bank account, say you get 3% per year. And you deposit a certain amount of money. If you get 5% per year, what are you most likely going to do exactly? You'll deposit more money than just with, with just 3%. So, if the interest rate rises, you want to deposit more money on your bank account and you want to have less money in your pocket. So the currency you'll be taking with you inside your pocket is going to decrease. And that's important to know because demand for money is always the demand for currency in your pocket. We're not talking about the bank account itself, but the currency you'll be taking with you. That's important to know. So, the interest rate rises and the amount of money you'll be taking with you will decrease. That's important to know. It's always this way. There's one thing rising, there's another thing decreasing. The interest rates are going to rise, the amount of money you'll be taking with you is going to decrease and vice versa. We call it opportunity cost. Interest rates are the opportunity cost, or the interest rate is the opportunity cost of having money with you, of having currency with you. And that's the demand for money. So there is a negative correlation between the interest rate and the demand for money. That's very important to know and to understand. Because of the interest rate serving as opportunity cost, we have, a, we have this demand for real money. Okay. What happens? What happens if like real GDP rises? If real GDP rises, then with the same interest rate, you'll just want to have more money with you. You just want to have more currency with you. So there is a large difference. There is a difference between income and demand for money. It is not the same. If I want to sell you something, a cup of tea or anything, I'm not asking for money, I'm asking for income, right? That's important to know. If I sell you something, I'm asking for income and not for money. The demand for money is just the demand for having currency in my pocket. That's how we interpret it here in those models. So, giving the same interest rate, giving the same interest rate with a higher real gross domestic product, you want to have more money in your pocket. And that's it. Which means that if real GDP rises, you have a movement to the right of the entire demand curve for money. And if real GDP decreases, you have a movement to the left. That's important to know the consequence of um, movements of real GDP. Secondly, Financial innovations. If there are financial innovations, you don't need that high amount of money any longer, of currency any longer in your pockets. So you decrease your demand for currency in your pocket if there's financial innovation. If you can pay with uh, more credit cards and so on and so on. So there's a movement to the left of the demand for money if there is financial innovation. So, what have we been talking about? We've been talking about the demand for money itself, the negative correlation between the interest rate and the demand for real money, and of course, we've been talking about movements, what happens if real GDP rises or decreases, and if there's financial innovation. Thank you for watching.